Dustin Young, Loam Romer, and today we're going to talk about a product that I think is going to have a huge impact on your riding and make your bike more fun than it already is. And it's a really easy upgrade. Brake pads. That's right, we're going to talk about brake pads, but specifically MTX brakes brake pads. I'm going to talk about the difference between traditional brake pads, what MTX brings to the table, and talk about just how good they are. Now, first question, right out of the gates. Are MTX brake pads as good as they claim on their website? Hell yes and then some. I gotta tell you, I've been riding these things for a year. I've got them on my cross country bike in a set of guide ultimates. I got them on the Yeti in a set of codes, on her Yeti in a set of codes. I got them on every bike up here. I got them on a set of guides on a fat bike. I've been riding these things. I bought the first set and then every other bike followed. My friend's bikes have followed. I got a buddy on XTRs. He's running them now. I got a buddy on XTR Saint combos that I built. He's running them now. There's a lot of people running these brake pads that I know and every one of them loves them. Here in a minute, I did a little pre-recording. We'll get to it. I asked one of my buddies who's been riding them for a while to tell us what he thought. We'll get to that. Let him give you his words on what he thinks of these brake pads. Now, I already sound like I'm a fanboy. I am. These things are incredible. No, nobody's giving me discounts, free brake pads, nothing to say any of this, right? This is just, I, I tell you what I think. As a matter of fact, let's get it out of the way up front. After I wrote MTX brake pads, you want to know what I think of all the other pads I've ever tried and definitely factory brake pads? It's this right here. Yep. That's how bad I think they are in comparison. All right. So let's talk about all the options that have been out there for a while. I got, I got a few of them listed here. You got factory resin pads. These, these are quiet. It's nice. Easy to contaminate. Went out and did a mud race. Had just put new pads in. Threw those pads away immediately. It didn't take into the first lap and they were toast. I was basically riding with 10% of the brakes I'd started with at the beginning of the race. That's how easy it was to ruin a set of resin pads from, from Shimano. Shram, they're not any better. I'm not saying they're better. Let me go to factory metallic brakes. More stopping power, harder to contaminate. Howl like a, you know, crying child when they get wet. Noisy, chattery, you can tell they're on the bike. They use a rough surface in order to, you know, create friction against uh, stainless brake pad or stainless rotor in order to create your stopping power. A little different style versus resin. Um, they're better, better stopping power, but they've got lots of detriments to come with them. And again, you know, they're not that bad. You can, they're not that hard to contaminate. Once you contaminate them, they're, they're out of there. Trucker Co, cheap. That's good enough. They, they don't work any better than they cost. Um, they don't last, they don't work. They're not that great of, they're just cheap. They're a cheap alternative. Swiss Stop, this one, this one cracks me up. They're expensive. They're more expensive than MTX pads. <laughs> they don't work any better in my opinion than factory brake pads. They, they might be a little better, but not much. So what's the big difference? Like why, right? Well, you take motorsports, ceramic, ceramic mix brake pads. You want to stop a car with a lot of control without overheating the brakes. You want to race ceramic. You, you, you know, and you had a fortune, you'd build them all out of carbon fiber, but you know, that's got a whole new cost structure. Ceramic brake pads in motorcycles, racing, cars, they've, they've been the standard to set. They work well in the wet, they're quiet, they perform, they resist heat, they, they, they have more stopping power, better modulation, they're just a better material. And MTX brought that material to mountain bikes. They brought real motorsport quality braking to mountain biking. 
And that's spectacular. You know, you read their marketing, you know, you get a lot of power. They work well in the wet mud. They have a great heat fade, they have high modulation, low brake noise, and incredible pad life. Now, let me talk about these claims. They have crazy good power. Power doesn't mean locking your wheel up. I think that's an interesting, power means when you come onto the brake, behavior, you're not, you don't have to yard on it for the thing to work, right? So now you have a lighter touch and you get really nice power out of it. Wet mud, I've ridden these things plenty, creek crossings, muddiness, nastiness, uh, this winter night rides and wet and gnarly and nothing. They work great, they're quiet, they still work, they're not contaminated, I didn't have to take them out, I didn't have to throw them away, they weren't ruined. Um, and they didn't tear my rotors apart because they had sand particles stuck in them. They, they worked really, really good. Heat fade, I got them on the Yeti, I've ridden some really steep stuff. Uh, you get great brake control, it's smooth, and you can take these long descents, uh, even at a really high rate of speed where you're braking constantly to get in control for the next turn, nothing. Never think about the brakes anymore. Don't even have to worry about it. Modulation, this one's interesting. Take a set of Shimano brakes. Bam, power on, right? That's what everybody wants, that. Mm, they love Shimano for that. Problem is, Shimano doesn't have a lot of modulation at that point. It's on, and if you pull a little bit more, it's skid. These, you get that nice feeling of power, but you, can, you don't need to slam on them, and they work really good. It actually really improves that entire Shimano experience, so that you get that feeling, that instant, that quicker bite, but you don't need to pull, and you get really nice modulation out of brakes that previously that wasn't what they were known for. The flip side of that is take a SRAM brake, which is always known for having pretty high modulation in the design. You now get a lot more power, so when you start to pull, you get that more instant on feeling. How would I know this? Well, I got a buddy that pretty much, you put him on a bike with Shimano brakes and he just like, the whole bike is a pile of garbage in his opinion, all because of the brakes. And uh, you know, he feels like you got a yard on them to make them work, and he likes that, sh that Shimano feeling, he loves it, it's, it's the way it is. I put a set of, in my guide, in my uh, guide ultimates, I threw a set of MTX pads in, he was out riding my bike, and he's like, man, these SRAM brakes, they've changed so much, they're just, they're amazing now. He has ridden that bike before with the factory pads and swore it was the worst thing ever. He actually considered that I might have upgraded my brakes. I mean, no change except the brake pads. And, on his XTR brakes, we put the pads in, and he was like, wow, these brakes actually perform really well all around, instead of just being stoppers, right? So he got this, this other performance benefit in his own bike, and he just loved it. That's a lot of testimony right there as to just how, how much they improve your overall brake power. They do something else that's really awesome. You don't need to keep getting bigger rotors to get bigger surface area to slow the bike down because your pads are inferior and you're going faster. You can be, say, like, let's say you got your trail bike and you're like 203, 180. Go 180, 180. Go 180, 160. Give it a, give it, that's, instead of buying bigger rotors and adding unsprung weight and surface area, these pads will actually work exceptionally well with the correct rotor size. So, Instead of upgrading your brakes because you think they don't stop well, or upgrading your rotor size because you need more surface area, you can simply just upgrade your brake pads and get a tremendous benefit. So much so that if you took, let's say you've got a set of XT, two piston brakes, three or four year old set of brake pads, the 800 series. And you know, you're thinking about buying a brand new set of XT, four piston, 8000 series. They, I think they're 8020s. I would suggest the first thing you should do is just try these brake pads because you're probably gonna, these are gonna stop better in your two piston caliper than factory pads in a four piston caliper. And it's not like there's just brakes laying all over the shelves right now to go buy, so, but an American made brake pad shipped out of Utah, you're gonna be able to find those. Get on their website, get them ordered, spectacular upgrade. You might not make any other changes. You might not increase your rotor size. You might do nothing else other than the most simple upgrade you can do. Take the pads out, push the pistons back, bleed your brakes in the process, throw on some new pads, or don't bleed your brakes if you don't feel like it, I guess, and uh, 
off to the races you go. Center your thing up and go. So let's talk a little bit about why I think this was such a big improvement to the bike. Brake control is one of the most important things you'll gain on your bike. If it wasn't, you wouldn't constantly be going for four piston or bigger brakes or you know TRP downhill brakes on your trail bike. You wouldn't be doing these constant upgrades. Yet the factory pads 15 years later aren't any better. So you just keep buying bigger brakes. And you end up in a situation where you got a lot of brake and you're skidding and you're doing all these things. And yet what you really are looking for is a brake pad that correctly works with the rotor surface so that you can have, depending on how hard you're pulling on the lever and what experience you need in that moment, a lot more control over that moment so you can get slowed down under control. You're not digging a trench. You're not bouncing around with the back end. You're not creating braking forces against your suspension that you did not want to experience. And you actually then come in, hit your corner, rail out of the berm, maintain your momentum, and you just are, your bike is better for it. Here, here's some, here's from Russell about what he thinks about these pads. I did the red pads, so there's red and gold pads. You know, um, you started with golds. Yep. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'll kit it up. I'm over 200 pounds, maybe 220. I like to ride fast, going downhill. I figured just jumping to the gold pads, the e-bike the e pads would probably be a better fit. Uh, and it, it was true, it was a good fit, um, but they're way, way powerful. I mean, they up the, the game big time on control, modulation, and just, just touching the brakes, uh, slowing down really fast. So I had the bike set up for big descents. I had two or three rotors, front and rear. Oh boy, so much power, so much power. Uh, running XTR levers, uh, Saint calipers, just barely touching. Um, way too powerful for trail riding. Big descents, yes. Ashland, Downeyville, Tahoe, big descents. Um, I went back to 180, 180. Uh, still lots of power. That's perfect for trail riding and fantastic upgrade. And he said something really interesting and it is on the money. Um, if you run Shimano or SRAM brakes, you keep getting big rotors because you think that's why you're not slowing down or managing your brakes well enough downhill. It's not. It's, it's literally that your brake pads are not good enough. The MTX brake pads, I mean, I've had them make no noise until recently. So I would say more than 95% of the time, mud, water, winter riding, we did that like downpour sand ride and our yep. brakes, are, the brakes worked perfect all the way in. Never thought about whether or not I had brakes. You're gonna do a set of reds, right? In your next, in the, uh, in the Kona. Yeah, so I have a, a hard tail that's <clears throat> uh, carbon hardtail uh, kind of built for racing and I have four piston brakes on that and uh, Trucker Co pads which are fine for trail riding but uh, if you really need the power I'm not getting it out of the Trucker Co uh, and so I'm going to the reds instead of the golds I'm gonna try the reds um, you know, this is more of a cross-country race bike I don't think I need all the power of the gold. So I think for modulation, control, um, going for the reds this time. If you're thinking about making an upgrade, these don't cost a lot of money. You can get reds for race. You can get golds for like e-bike and heavier stuff. Um, you can learn a lot more specifications on their website. I just wanted to tell you what the experience was like with these things. I run all reds. As you heard, Russell runs gold and red depending on his bike. Um, they make, I know they make them for the guide and they make them for the code and they make them for a lot of different Shimano brakes and Hayes brakes and some other stuff out there. So make the upgrade. Again, they have codes. They always have good discounts. Um, again, price wise, I mean, this code factory pad and this code MTX pad there, I think the MTX pad actually came out a better price. Um, so it's not a cost issue at that point. 
Uh, you're, you're talking about a big performance upgrade in your bike. I mean, you don't buy crappy tires because you want bad traction and you shouldn't buy crappy brakes because you don't want to stop right. So, you know, think about your brake pads a little differently than maybe you have before. I hope that's something I was able to help you achieve through this video. Please, if you like this video, uh, hit like. Um, again, this is an American made product. This is an American mountain bike company. If you've heard in any other of my videos, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of promoting that. By liking this video, it'll help it get spread further and more people can see it and hopefully more people can find these brake pads. Um, if, you subscribe, if you like this, please subscribe to my channel so I can keep making content like this. Uh, having a good time. And this is a hobby. Again, I don't, I'm not making any money. Nobody's giving me discounts or free pads to do this. Uh, I just did it because it's something I found that I really liked uh, and it was such a big improvement to the overall quality of, of riding my bike. Um, there, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Uh, if you're curious about any of the information today or if you just disagree, if you don't think they're very good, let me know. I'd be curious what your take is if you've ridden them. So um, really appreciate you watching this video and I do hope to see you out on the trails.